game replays are now available for anyone to watch. You simply go to this website, you go to the server of choice of the replay you're trying to get. So like for example, if I want to get if, uh, if I want to get the most recent round, I just go to the most recent date and then I would download this zip file. Once you download it, you simply just drag the whole file onto your launcher like so. And it will say drop to run game. It'll connect like you're connecting to a server. And you just got to give it a second. It'll open up the game itself. It literally starts off at the very first frame of a server loading where all the entities are spawned. And you can, like say if I just want to skip to the middle of the round, I can do so. It takes a second to load. And you click the play button. And it's just like I'm spectating it as if it happened live. It is very, very cool. The new playable species, which are moths, have been added to the game. They, in a nutshell, can only eat cloth as their dietary option. They have better movement speed and zero gravity, but can't fly. So, like, they can't fly in space, but they can slingshot around objects faster, and they move faster in no-gravity situations. And in general, they are worse at combat due to having worse damage multipliers, as in they take, like, more pierce and heat, for example. Any job can now buy the disposable ballistic turret. Nukies cannot buy it. And it's unchanged besides that, you just buy it, place it, and hit it, and you'll have a turret, which... I wasn't actually a syndicate agent, but yeah, uh, the turret does indeed work. Emag U tools now will offer a singular pair of insulated gloves. This could be pretty useful if you've already bought an Emag and you don't have a pair of insulated, or, or if you only manage to get an Emag as like part of a, a surplus crate and you still need insulated, well, you can quickly Emag the U-Tool to get the pair of insulators that is inside. The Syndicate Gas Mask now offers well, eye protection, so if you weld, you will no longer be blinded, which is uh, quite powerful because before you would have to either put on a welding mask or steal a pair of NG goggles. Uh, it did offer minor resistance before, as in, like, you'd only go blind for a little bit. The Syndicate PAI was added to the game, and the one unique thing about the Syndicate PAI is that it actually has access to the Syndicate channel. And, uh, your results may vary. It costs a singular telecrystal, but it makes it obvious you're a Syndicate agent, or if at least if you purchase it. And, uh, the PAI might end up saying something on the Syndicate radio that it shouldn't, and... Uh, yeah, that's just something you're going to have to take the risk with, but either way, it's still pretty cool seeing it. Spear throwing has been changed, and in general, throwing objects that do damage has received an update, but spears in it specifically have received a pretty big update. They now actually throw in a straight line, and if you hit somebody with it, the spear will actually embed in them, and that person has to pull it out. It doesn't, like, hinder movement or anything, it doesn't actually hinder you in any way, but it's still really cool looking, and seeing an actual, like, throwing animation... Uh, is really cool, and you could actually pull the spear out of you and then throw it back if you wish, so that is something to keep in mind. Reflected projectiles no longer deal stamina damage. So before, if you shot somebody with four disabler shots with an energy shield, even if they reflected it, they would still get disabled. That is not the case anymore. As you can see, I've already hit them with more than four, and uh, yeah. Disabler basically can't do anything to an energy shield anymore, so that is pretty useful. Melee combat has rebalanced. The charge up wide swing system is now gone. The right click is now just replaced with a basic wide system. It does its normal damage and doesn't have to wind up. So if you land, you'll always do your weapons damage. So for example, the combat knife does 10 damage and the wide swing will do 10 damage. And the left click now will actually do 25% additional damage as to compare to before. So now the knife does 12 and a half damage, for example, on a singular attack. So that means all attacks that do singular target damage, aka your left clicks, with melee weapons will do 25% more damage. Your fists are not included, those have been balanced, so that way you can't break things that you couldn't break before. And mobs that bite, for example, now also do 25% more damage as a result. So, be careful. Iron, aluminum, and uranium mixed together will create an EMP reaction. The taxi bot was added to the game. It only takes a proximity sensor, a Borg head, Borg arm, and five steel. It is a bot that you can sit in, and it becomes a active ghost roll. And the point of the taxi bot is that you just drive people where they need to go. You have a little flashlight, and you're 
uh, rather fast. And what's cool is a tax taxi bot can actually talk full English as well. A new syndicate objective has been added to the game. It is called the Emergency Security Orders. Top secret, these documents specify the emergency orders that the HOS must carry out when ordered by Central Command. They spawn in the head of security's locker. There's a good chance that the head of security is going to either carry it on him or leave it in the locker. But it is a new steel objective that directly involves the security department. Stims have received a buff where stims will now double your stamina. So before it would take two stun baton hits to stun you, but with stimulants it takes four. You will have double the stamina until the stimulants run out. And you'll still have the other benefits of the stimulant, uh, such as basically instantaneous stun recovery. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, rather strong for a short fight. Like, if you are a Nuki who is making first contact with security, uh, taking four stun baton hits, having quick recovery, faster move speed, is a rather strong benefit. And you'll still have that benefit for a full minute. Mining has received a rebound, so things like the protokinetic accelerator, coiners aren't quite as good as mining, where things like the drill and pickaxe are much better at mining. So like, PKA, you can shoot things slowly to mine. The crusher, you have to wield it, but it has a faster projectile, so like, makes it slightly better than mining at the, than the PKA. The pickaxe can wide swing and get through ore pretty quickly because of that. But the drill attacks very fast and can crush through rocks very quickly. You can no longer see interaction outlines in the dark, so like, you can't hover over yourself to see the interaction, you can't click and drag yourself anymore, which I know some people use to get an advantage. For example, this box is here, and if there's light on it, I can see the interaction, and if I like slowly walk into it, you can see it clearly, but the interaction itself does not have light, so if you can't see an object, you can't figure out it's there. You can still right click in the dark to figure out where you're at, but that's basically the only tool you have now. To figure out what's in the darkness and ideally even that would get changed you probably just shouldn't be able to see anything in the dark if you just can't see it but either way uh this is really nice and makes darkness just that much better at concealing things that should be concealed security hud now actually shows people's job icons above their head so like if they don't have an icon it'll be a question mark if they have a passenger icon it'll be a passenger uh, the set cut isn't really all, like, the set cut isn't easily obtainable, because, like, the sunglasses don't do anything for it, but, like, the med set cut does it, and the set cut itself does it, and on top of this change, the agent ID card will now let you change your icon, so you can full security a little easier, so, like, I could change myself to a janitor, and, look, the icon updates in real time. The Heristov has received a nerf, it no longer is a one-shot stun, it, an, it also had its damage nerfed, it only does 45 piercing now instead of its uh, 60. Still does the structural damage, and still does quite a lot of stamina damage. And, well, in most cases, the actual damage itself is still incredible. But yeah, two shots to stun, and still pretty damn close to two shots to kill. The first range bomb has been added to the game, and it is a Xeno Spitter found on salvage missions. It will spit at you from a distance and do kites. It is uh, pretty accurate and decent at predicting you. It doesn't do all that much damage though. And their little jukes can cause you to miss. So uh, it actually gives a fairly decent range fight, but they go down in three PKA shots, so they're not absurdly tanky. Or But having range pressure from a mob in this game is a actually pretty interesting feature. Whispering has received some changes. Now, whispering in general is quieter, and just the way you perceive people whispering is different. So that person over there is going to say hi in a whisper. And I didn't make out a single letter, but I'm only a few tiles away. Type a longer sentence, like I'll just type in, hello there, how are you? You pick up three or so letters, but things have changed now, where if they are wearing a mask or something and they whisper, I didn't even hear that, it was too far away. If I get closer, you'll still understand them with their perceived identity, but if they were to lose the identity, so now they are just a young man to me, if they whisper again, hello there, how are you? They are now a young man whispering. They don't give up their identity if they are too far away. However, if they still talk, they 
will have their real identity revealed. So whispering can hide your identity. And if they get too close to you and whisper, you'll hear their real name if you can make out all their words. If you can only make out some of their words, it'll go back to young man. And you won't just understand somebody's identity if they are uh, too far away for you to even understand what they're saying. So this will allow uh, people trying to actually keep uh, their identities hidden while whispering to each other, uh, an extra benefit, and overall is just good in general. Whispering should be not revealing who you are seven walls away. The last thing I'll cover this week is how arming the nuclear fission explosive works. Before, you could arm it basically anywhere as long as there was a tile under it. Now if you try to arm it next to space, it'll say the anchoring bolt, the anchoring bolts fail to lock to the floor. So what you have to do is you can basically just keep dragging it until you get deeper into the station to a location that is further away from space tiles. So in this case, uh, this is about seven tiles away and that will allow it to be anchored there. This can present some problems though. If you cause too much damage or people are aware of how the nuke anchoring works, you can kind of game it. So like I can't plant it here anymore because the tiles are gone. And Nukies themselves can also game it because they could just place tiles. This is a nice little band-aid fix in a way for Nukies arming the uh, nuke on like solars, which just wasn't really that engaging of gameplay. And yeah, uh, arming the nuke is still the same. You just put the code in and the disc. The only thing that changed was anchoring. That is all I got for this week. There was actually quite a lot this week. A new species and melee rebalance is pretty cool. Um... I want to thank all of our maintainers and contributors for all their hard work on the game, keeping it up to date, polished, and all that good stuff. Replays especially, which is not an in-game change, is monumental, both for adminning, which isn't all that important for players, but just in general for content creation, it has a lot of potential for just seeing things that you wish you saw, it has potential. And all that good stuff. And I will scroll through the change log so you can read it in case you don't have access to it otherwise. And I appreciate y'all watching.